What is up all my beautiful Dolly friends? I'm Dr. Doll and welcome to another video. Um, so in this video I just wanted to kind of talk about customs, custom dolls, and why do they cost so much? Um, <laughs> I get asked that question a lot. Um, I think people get a little bit sticker shocked when they see how much um, custom dolls go for. I think what is like in the typical range is anywhere from 150 to like three, 350. Um, and I've seen some customs that go for even more than that. So when we think about customs, so, well, first of all, <laughs> American Girl Dolls are $110 from AG right now, which is a lot of money for a doll. And I think people get a little bit put off by how much customs cost because they're like, listen, American Girl Dolls are already crazy expensive. Like, why would I spend even more on a custom doll, you know? Um... So I just kind of want to talk about, like, why do they cost so much? Um, and it's not, I think people, not everyone, but some people assume that um, the sellers are just greedy and that's why they ask so much. But I don't think that they realize how expensive the doll making uh, process can be. So when you look at like a corporation like Mattel, um, first of all, all of American Girl dolls are made in a factory, which automatically lowers the cost of production. Um, so you have machines doing a lot of the work, you have an assembly line, you have teams, um, and they have over 32,000, according to Google, they have, Mattel has over 32,000 employees worldwide. So with a custom, there's one person, <laughs> typically, there's one person doing all the work. Uh, so with, you know, a, a major company, you might have, you know, the factory creates the parts and the molds and then perhaps you have one team of people that do the stringing and then you have another pe uh, team of people who do the wigs and and you have like there's this it doesn't all just fall onto one person whereas with a custom you have one person who's carving out hours of their life to create this custom one-of-a-kind doll um so that's something that factors in the fact that um, we don't have factories, we don't have machines, most of us. Um, we have these, we have our hands, we have our brain, um, and that's that's it. We have a few very like remedial tools, um, and so that does drive the cost up a little bit. Labor is more expensive when you're dealing with a product that's made by an individual. Um, the other thing is just the supplies. Supplies for dolls are so expensive. Like, I think some of you might be surprised the cost of wigs, the cost of eyes, the cost of um, clothing, clothing. <laughs> Doll clothes are so expensive. Um, so <laughs> to put it into perspective, um, I have my gorgeous custom, she's for sale by the way, Chantel here, and I'm going to use her as an example. So I would say that Chantel, the doll itself, which uh, she's a gorgeous Sonali mold. So the doll itself maybe cost me fifty dollars. Um, if we, if I was to purchase like a TLC classic mold or a Josefina mold, those are more affordable. I can get those under forty most of the time. Sometimes you know it's supply and demand. Sometimes they're more expensive. Sometimes you can get a better deal. Um, with the Sonali molds, with the Addy molds, with the Just molds, 
you're looking at at least spending 50 to 70 for even a TLC uh, doll. So this Sonali mold here, mold here um, was TLC, and I, I want to say I spent $50 on her, and that includes shipping, which was actually a pretty good deal. Um, so then her eyes, her eyes are acrylic, nothing super special or like premium. Um, they are gorgeous, but they are acrylic sleep eyes. So the eyes were $9. This wig, I believe was $30 and that's on the cheaper side of wigs. Wigs will go, um, they can be anywhere from 20 up to $50. So you're talking 50 for the doll, $30 for the wig. So right now you're at 80 just for supplies. The eyes were nine. So we'll just say 10. So we're at 90. Um, the clothing, um, and not even, I'm not even putting shoes in there. Um, so the clothing alone, I try to keep clothing under 20. That's sort of my little safe space, but, um, clothing can be crazy expensive. Like the clothing can cost more than the dolls. So, um, I think this outfit cost me $10, um, for this coat. She's got on a coat, a cami and some basic jeans. Um, so $10 for that. And then another $10 for the shoes. Shoes are also a very big sort of expense that you don't really think of necessarily, but shoes are also can be pretty pricey. So that means altogether, what I've got $110 wrapped up in this doll. That does not even count the restringing. First of all, I dyed her body. I know I cleaned, I, I totally took apart, cleaned her body um, in a detergent bath. I restuffed her. I dyed her canvas. I restrung her completely. I did the eye swap. I hand painted her face, her entire face, her lips, her eyelashes. I don't know if you can see. She has eyelashes. I hand painted her eyebrows. I hand painted her lips. And then I also sealed that paint. So $110 for supplies only. And then that doesn't even count labor on top of it. So you can see why customs cost more um, because there is a lot of money involved. Um, I think people, <laughs> You know, every time I sell a doll, um, I'll have a friend be like, oh, you just made $150. And I'm like, well, actually, I only made like $20. Like, you know, I, I, yes, I did make $150 off of that sale. But really, when you consider the amount of time and all the, the supplies that I had to purchase for that doll, I'm really only making a profit of $20, maybe $30 if I'm lucky. Um, so just because you see a doll for sale and it says that it's $200, that person probably has $150 wrapped up in that doll. Um, and other people who do customs know that. Um, so I feel like we're a lot more understanding, but a lot of the general populace don't realize how expensive it can be to do customs. Um, so I have 110 wrapped up in beautiful Chantel here. Um, and that is, I would say, pretty standard. So the, the custom making, the custom uh, business model sort of follows the, the retailer's business model where you purchase goods and then you price your goods for sale that cover that expense. But the problem is because we're individuals, a lot of time we don't have access to wholesale prices. Um, so we're paying retail for the supplies themselves. So we're then having to upcharge for not only the cost of pretty expensive supplies, but also the amount of labor and work that goes into it. Um, now, the plus side to purchasing a custom doll is you are getting a one-of-a-kind piece of art 
Um, and not everyone, it's not for everyone. Customs are not for everyone. Um, it, you have to be someone who, you know, gravitates towards wanting something that's unique. Um, and, and a lot of people don't, a lot of people are very, very happy purchasing things. Um, you, you know, they're obviously our generation does very, very well. Um, American girl does very, very well selling multiples of the same products. Um, but I think that customs are very special. It's definitely a niche market. Um, and it's, it's not for everyone. Um, it's not for everyone to do the customs and it's not for everyone to purchase the customs, but, um, it is very special to know that, you know, this doll, there's only one of her and, um, in the entire world. So I think that's pretty cool. And people who appreciate that are willing to spend a little bit more on a doll that they know is one of a kind. Um, I'm one of those people that I don't like to have what everyone else has. So I like, you know, I like my customs. I like my, I like my special, unique, beautiful girls. Um, and not saying that dolls that aren't customs aren't unique and beautiful, but you get what I'm saying. Like, um, I hand painted this doll myself. So there is not another doll in the world exactly like her. Even if I was to buy another Sonali mold, same wig, same outfit, same face paint, she would still be a little different. Um, she's not made in factory. Um, I mean, her parts were, but she was made by a person. Um, so it's more like you're selling a piece of art. You're selling a, an artwork piece rather than, um, does that make any sense? <laughs> I, I hope I'm making sense. I'm not always the best at communicating, so, um, I'm working on it, <laughs> but, um, I, I think people get a little bit sticker shocked. I, I've had a lot of a lot of requests for custom orders this Christmas, um, which I'm very, very thankful for. But I think people are a little surprised that what what little they can get for their money. Um, you know, I have a lot of people like, well, what will a hundred dollars get me? And I'm like, um, you know, I can buy a TLC doll and restring her, <laughs> you know, there's not like a hundred dollars doesn't go very far in the custom world. Um, you're almost better off buying a, an American girl doll straight from their website at that point. So, um, customs, it's a different world and the price points are different. They reflect that. Um, and so I, you know, they're not really, I think to compare them, to compare a, a custom American girl to a, um, to one of the American girls you buy straight off the website, I don't think that's fair because you're not taking in, into account the amount of work and time and effort and artistry that was put into the custom doll. Um, so yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's more expensive than buying something factory made. Um, but you know, it's worth it at least to a lot of people. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about, um, customs, why they're so pricey and, um, don't think that people who do customs are getting really wealthy off of it because they're not, it's a very expensive business. Um, it, you have to put a lot of money into it to get money out of it. Um, now, I am willing to do it because I absolutely adore dolls. I love doing what I do. Um, but it is expensive business to get into. Um, wigs are very expensive. And clothing, like I said, clothing is a huge expense. Hey, what are you doing? You taking a nap? Um... So, and, and eyes, you know, I, I tend to buy acrylic because it's cost effective, but you can, I mean, if you go with some really premium glass eyes, those puppies can cost as much as the doll did, <laughs> you know, eyes alone, eyes can cost 
$45 for a pair of premium glass eyes, $45 for eyes. Um, a wig can cost $50. So $100 right there for hair and eyes. So you can see how it really adds up. I mean, you have to be very, very smart. Um, now, I am able to sell mine on the lower end, around the $150 mark, because I purchase very TLC dolls for a lower price, and then I fix them up myself. Um, there's a lot of custom... Um, sellers who do not do that, they purchase brand new, which means that they are purchasing purchasing a hundred and ten dollar doll. So, and then they're purchasing, you know, maybe another hundred of supplies. So that's why they're selling them for for high prices, two fifty, three hundred. It's not because they're going to make that off the doll. Um, they're probably going to make fifty fifty bucks off of off of a doll at that point. Um, because you also have to take in account, you know, taxes, seller fees, shipping. Um, so that, you know, when you see a custom that's for sale for $300, don't automatically assume that that person's being greedy because they, they might have 200 or 250 wrapped up in that doll. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to kind of share, it's, it's, a, it's a rapidly growing community, the Customs Doll community. It seems to be gaining a lot of popularity these days. Um, I've noticed even AG has sort of tried to like copy a lot of, like the sunflower eyelashes is definitely something that started in the custom world. And now AG is like, producing a lot of dolls with the sunflower eyelashes, which I think is hilarious because, um, they, it's like, it's kind of like talking out of both sides of their mouth. Like they're like, Oh, you know, customs, they, they're Franken dolls, but we're going to make our dolls look like them, <laughs> you know, like, hmm, well, which is it? So, but I don't think that, um, I don't think that Mattel can ever really hit the the niche market of customs just because they are so large. I think what makes it such a desirable and attractive community is because it's an individual. It's someone who's giving you that one-on-one -on -one attention, giving you exactly what you want. And you just can't have that with a large business like Mattel. Um, so anyways... If you're curious, there's my little spiel on it. Um, Shiley, once again, my cat has discovered that I was filming and had to be the center of attention. So um, anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. This is beautiful Chantal. She is still for sale on my Etsy shop, um, Dr. Doll Designs. She is also for sale on Mercari. She has this gorgeous little scalloped booties and her gorgeous red winter coat. I think she'd be a, a wonderful Christmas gift. Um, just putting that out there. So, um, but anyways, thank you, Chantel, for um, being my, for helping me with this video. Thank you, Charlie, for not helping me with this video, but still being a part of it. And thank you, guys. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.